once before. And hey. this hangout is air is live. Hey, amazing. Okay, here we go. Hey, everybody, welcome to another Crazy TV Talk uh, hangout. We've got our illustrious panel with us again. Uh, Tony's going to be joining us a little bit later, hopefully. And um, for sure, this is going to be an awesome show. Obviously, we, if you've been following these shows, it is Utopia, which is an amazing uh, TV program. If you don't believe us, check it out. If you watch it and don't like it, well, not much All we can do. All you do is listen, Bob. Yeah. All you do is listen. They'll know. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, today we're going to be covering episode five, uh, which is an awesome episode. Uh, yeah. And I'm just going to throw it over to Big T J Dash Deanish. Uh, his <laughs> ramble at the beginning. Hey, Bob. It's so good to see you, and uh, it's so good to be in this side of the new year. Uh, happy mm. 2015 to everyone. Just because whenever you're listening to this, it is now 2015. We love it. Yeah, uh, and we're talking about our favorite show again. So happy to be here. I'm I'm in low key mode, Bob, today. But I'll, I'll pick it up once you we get flying. <laughs> 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 He's just uh, yeah. it's a little um, post almost New Year's hangover, I think. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, but I'm, I'm doing a my hair fell out. Yeah, and and uh, the new haircut and all that kind of stuff too. So yeah, and episode five, I'm excited. Uh, and of course, we have fabulous Ken. Welcome, Ken. How are you today? Hello, 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 hello. Yes, yes. Welcome to 2015. Nice. All right, there you go. That sounded like a Bob intro there, wasn't it? <laughs> Listening to too many of our podcasts, dude. Oh no, oh, no. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Nice. Okay. Um, Everybody, well, let's let's go over the rules of this this encounter. If this is the first, if you just stumbled across the show, this is so your first experience with Craving TV Talk. Uh, basically, we're we're going over the show episode by episode. We've got some set questions: um, best character, best scene, weirdest and most confusing scene, best line, and then an overall score for the particular uh, show that we're watching. And this one, we're breaking Utopia down uh, per episode, one show. Uh, per episode because there's so much to talk about. I mean, such an amazing, amazing... I mean, we could fill a whole show with the color on this yeah. show. We could fill a whole show on quotes. I mean, it's like, supposed to have one quote. Say, how many quotes? I got five. So, um... 17. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I've got... I've Actually, uh, best line, eh, I've only got two because I'm... I know somebody's going to pick my line, so I'll, I'll have a more obscure one and hopefully nobody will pick that one. Um... So uh, let's not dilly dally too long. Let's get this sucker started, oh, and uh, yeah. I'm gonna throw it over to Ken at the beginning. And uh, our first set of questions is best character development of the character, or just a great character uh, for this particular episode. Ken, who did you think stepped up to the plate? Oh well, you know who I thought really stepped up to the plate was Michael's wife, Jen. Um, yeah. it, it, you know, I mean, she she just she just blew her brains out. Uh, you know, emotionally, uh, with with the affair and all the rest of it, um, and then and then she it came around and she said, "Okay, I have to get through this. I have to survive. So I want the kid." And yeah. and and the the betrayal uh, just just led her right into the next step, saying, "Okay, I want the kid." Yeah. Yeah. And and all the hubby, he just he he just buckled and said yes, dear, yes, dear. <laughs> yeah, uh, she so she thought, was amazing, and she's been yeah. this subtle character throughout the series, and in this yes. episode, really, she shines and and takes control. I I absolutely agree with you. She's yeah. so powerful, and it's just that one scene after she watches that horrible video of right. him and the Russian prostitute, and right. the, she, you know that. The, the network sent all the dirty details to him, uh, to her, to his wife. She watches the video, and it's the next morning. He's sitting, uh, he's sleeping on the couch, and she yeah. just comes in cold and basically yeah. says, uh, you know, uh, she has a child. Mm -hmm. uh, is it a boy? Yeah. Uh, we want it. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, yeah. it's no, unreal. No, not even how we will. You're, you're going to get it. You're going to get yeah. it. And and I yeah. want to talk to her this afternoon, and and this, as far as I'm concerned, is a done deal. Yeah, and they're I'm a little disappointed that they didn't sort of uh, play her up a little more. I mean, she she's a she's a good strong character. I, I wish she was in the show a little more, um, because uh, I mean, Michael is such a spineless sort of guy, uh, and and uh, his his wife is really the the strength of it all. 
Yeah, and, you know, it's really interesting. You're right. There's a there's a lot of people. What's so great about Utopia is you have these set fixtures of, of characters like RB and Lee who are killers. You know, yeah. one's a bit of a clown and one is totally creepy. And then you have somebody like Jessica Hyde who is a, just a survivor but is a broken person. But, right. you know will do anything in order to survive and has for, you know, a, a, since she was, what, six year, uh, nine years old or something yeah, like that. So yeah, yeah. for 20 years, she's basically been doing that. And then you have a guy like Michael and his wife, Jennifer. And I, I just I remember the scene, I think it was from episode three, where Michael's boss comes over and does the whole, wouldn't it be terrible if your wife wife got raped and yeah. she's just so congenial and it there's these two conversations they're entertaining going on and and all that kind of comes to a head in this episode where she just goes I have a goal I've been pushed yeah. into the situation my the the line she says and we'll get into it later about Michael is my husband is weak like just yeah. that yeah. simple idea but he's yeah. a good man like that yeah. is a strong character who can recognize right. the weakness of the man that she's with, but that he's still worth it, even though yeah. he's a total scumbag right now. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I think I think she's a great character. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here, and then uh, shocking as this may sound, I'm gonna give JD a chance to talk. <laughs> <laughs> now it's your turn, JD. Um, and we can all talk while well, Jadine's trying to explain something. So, Jadine, um, what was your best character? Um, for me? <laughs> it better be. <laughs> uh, for me, um, it, it really, I, I, I was torn between Jennifer, which I, I totally agree yeah. with, I think is pretty valuable, and Becky. Uh, really? Becky is dealing with a lot of things going through here, and, and, and specifically the contact, where now she's in this episode, um, we're, we're getting to the point of um, her basically facing what's going to happen to her, and Lentz, uh, or Letts, how is it pronounced? Let's. Let's. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. yeah, that's the guy they have tied up in the chair. And sure. and how he he literally she has to deal with um, she reveals the contact, which is the tech guy Donaldson, who was the guy that was helping Michael. She 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 has to listen to to let let's tell her that he's the one who created deals and he's super excited about it. And he marveled at his work. Are you getting the shakes yet? Like, he, like she has to face this. And then she meets Milner's son, who's in late stages of deals yeah. in a room, hooked up to a respirator, and she literally has to face her end. Like, her emotional journey in this whole episode is bananas, what she's yeah. got to put up yeah. with. And she makes some amazing choices and some amazing sacrifices coming up but I really think the arc of her character was super powerful in this one in having to deal with her inevitable fate. Because yeah. what's so neat is she's a reflection of the, t the pre-test, the, the test they did before. Can we create something in a lab and have it represent uh, in the generation afterwards? And that's what she was. She was right. Her father was the test subject. She's the result of that test. Mm. And... and it's unreal, like that she has to understand that or come to terms with it. So, I'd, for her emotionally, in terms of character development, it, it's fantastic to see that happen. And she, the the actress uh, um, Alexandra Roach, she does a great job of it, reading on her face and uh, wearing it. You can see her wear the weight. It's it's really well yeah. done. Yeah, you can. It, it, it's interesting you chose her for this this episode because I actually did it for next episode because I. I yeah, I totally get all the things you're doing, but God, next episode. Then it's it's this it's evolving. Like she's still her same, you know, a little on the smarmy side. And um, yeah. what what I noticed, and I can't remember this or the next episode. There's one scene, and I think it is actually next episode, the end of this episode. Uh, Jessica hides in there. They're in a, in, a, in a foyer, and basically, uh, it's a duplicate scene from earlier on, where yeah. they basically say, "Where the hell are you? Where the fuck have you been?" And um, yeah. there, there's a different response 
from the, the, yeah. the key people. So it was the same question, almost shot the same, but it's a different response to show how the characters have evolved and look at Jessica in a different light now, which I thought was yeah. really, really interesting, uh, even though it's totally off topic. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's so, okay. Uh, that's I, ex cause it, it's funny because we watch five and six kind of together. I mean, we did yeah. this today. Uh, so it, it is. It's this is that's what's so wonderful about Utopia with six, six episodes. It's this giant tapestry, and the episodes you could just watch them all back to back to back like one movie. You you oh, really yeah. could, you you really could in one sitting, and that's where it blends because that is the first scene of the next episode, Bob. That's why you're placing it there, and because yeah. she's Becky is becoming quite, you know, she's wrestling and fighting, but still powerful in this, and yeah. Well, it's a, it's a gambit too because uh, yeah. you know we've got this thing building up from episode four where we start to realize like and she has that she goes out to the the lake area and she calls the guy and she has an encounter she's got a yeah. second encounter coming up what's going to happen with that she's basically manning up and saying okay I'm I'm going to stop bitching about stuff and I'm going to actually take hold of my life and do stuff about it and then what happens in this episode next episode the universe just says oh yeah you want to tough up watch this boom and she's the, like the the stuff you guys are talking about by being exposed yeah. to to let's at its final stage is all the people giving her a hard time it is very traumatic for her and her just saying you know what I can take it it's yeah. and think back to the first episode guys when they're all in that car yeah and basically um what, what was it I think it was um Jesus I can't it, even remember who says who man it, up was it was it uh, Jessica Hyde yeah, it's Jessica. Yeah, who basically yeah. Says, must have been this the second episode. Now. Yeah, so it was, it was second episode, right? So Jessica yeah. is basically say, "Hey, basically, you guys better tough up, or you're gonna die." Yeah. And, yeah. and now we're starting to see, you know, five episodes later, four episodes later, it's like the characters are emerging like they should have manned up after they were originally talked three hours ago. You know, yeah. as far as as movie time is concerned, so yeah. it's really, really interesting as far as these characters are developing, and and I really appreciate the guys that developed the show saying like, okay, we're gonna stick a pin in this character, and this is she's evolving this time. I like that they don't try and squish all the characters all into one show and evolve them all at once. I think that's a huge mistake a lot of shows do, and they try and evolve too many characters at one time, and they don't get people give it people a chance to really show their character. Anyway, yeah. for me. I didn't choose her, ironically. Oh, not, I, oh, wait I know. a minute. Wait a minute. What Bob, an asshole. Bob, Bob. I know. Wilson is who I chose, and the reason I chose Wilson is because this is, the, this is you know, Wilson doing the flip. You're right. It's you know, pivotal Wilson, for him, isn't it? Wilson's making a major decision. He's, he's yeah. saying, you know what? And I'm, I'm going to make this happen. And uh, he ends up faking, uh, faking himself being stabbed. I mean, that's crazy. I know. Yeah. And that's not subtle, eh? It's like what, Ugh. and yeah. and then lying there in the floor. Oh, it's like, are you nuts, dude? You didn't have to do that. But he's such a paranoid dude. You can just see him thinking that. Yeah. Like, how I can I be real? Otherwise, oh. nobody's gonna believe me. Yeah, I'll just stab myself. I'm gonna kill sure. myself. But hey, what the heck? At least they'll believe me, type of thing. Um. So I thought that was really interesting, and I like what, and that's part of my one of my favorite lines. Uh, later on, I think that's in uh. I think it's on and and no I get I guess it's the, in the next episode. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, such yeah, a yeah. great line. Yeah. Such a great yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. Well, Anyways, well, well. Uh, I love Wilson and and yeah. his, you know, okay, I'm gonna switch side because I'm pro humanity and to be pro humanity, <laughs> um, I think that uh, we should make a bunch of people basically uh, immune to doing birth and it's gonna save the planet. So, yeah. y it's the okay, what, what it is. Back. Oh, go ahead. Somebody comes back with a counter argument, and you go, yeah. "Oh, yeah. yeah, oh, damn it! Oh, oh, there's yeah. that too. Nobody thought of that." Yeah. And and uh, I'm not sure if that happens in this episode or 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 six, but there there's the the counter argument to it. Uh, I mean, I was I was right with Letts and and Wilson, uh, you know, when it sort of came out, but but then the counter argument came out, and then went, "Oh, yeah, okay, maybe not." Well, I think that's what makes this show intellectually superior to a lot of the shows that are out there yeah. on TV right now. They're basically saying, all right, audience, watch this. Yeah. And they basically say, here's an argument, and you go, oh, my God, of course. Oh, silly me. Yeah. I believe well, you. And then, boom, here's the exact opposite of yeah. that argument. And it's like, yeah. oh, my God, this is what uh, – 
And what's sure interesting be- about this, this is what people in power regard. You know, we may whine and bitch about them, like prime ministers and presidents and CEOs and all that. They have to answer questions like this every day, and they get arguments like this every yeah, day. Where it's like they yeah. get a brilliant argument. It's like we have to do this, and then the guy stands up. Well, that's nice, but here's a counter argument which is just as brilliant. Yeah, and their job is lawyers, to make the hard lawyers decision. in the courtroom. Yeah. Lawyers in the courtroom. Or they, judges. They, they, and judges. They they go through this virtually every day. I would imagine. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's making tough decisions that nobody else wants to make, and regardless of what you do, you're going to be hated. I mean, that's yeah. that's the, and, and that's what Wilson does. He basically sure. goes with what he believes and mm, he's yeah. saying he's willing to do what must be done and that includes literally stabbing himself mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, no, kind of I'm ironic willing too. to do this yeah, I'm he's willing go that to far. stab myself yeah he's well, got to go that far well it's yeah. also kind of ironic because if you look at Wilson he was the guy at the beginning of the show he's introduced this is the guy that's in, into the conspiracy theory and he was anti-government and anti this and anti that and yeah. and what's happening in like season 2 oh my god it, he goes even to the next level but this is him siding with the government, yeah. the, the, the dark side. So the control mechanism, basically. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that these guys are the government just yet. Well, or, or some I'm not, convinced human... of, I'm not convinced of that, but, well, but there I, know are... you, I know what you mean. With the, yeah. the establishment. Yeah, okay, okay. Like, yeah. Uh, like dark is yeah. that. No, uh, I just, hang on, guys. I just got to jump in here for one second. I'm going to yep. pause. I'm pausing the show here. Um, pause. Uh, just give Tony a chance to jump. Tony, have you got your audio figured out? I have. I can hear you guys. Oh, hey, hear me. Tony's hey, here. Hey, all right. So, what did you do? I I decided I decided to abandon. Fi- I rebooted, but I also decided to re- abandon Firefox and go with Chrome. Hey, there you go. I know. And that's what I do. Pain, but it worked. You know yeah, what? For for uploading YouTube videos, I've abandoned Chrome and I use Firefox. So you know. Pfft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there's there's a a, a download app for, on Firefox that works just beautifully. Yeah, it does. Okay, guys, I'm going to yeah. start the show up again, and I'm just going to intro Tony into the show. Hang on. Yeah. Oh, uh, All right, that's really cool. Hey, Tony, uh, thanks for joining us on the show, and uh, I know you had some technical problems earlier. Thanks for toughing it out and coming back on. Uh, we're actually still on the first question. You haven't missed anything in the last uh, <laughs> time. Actually. <laughs> so, uh, I picked up, I so picked up the conversation that you guys were talking about, Wilson's change of heart, and that was a bit of a surprise for me, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we're we're actually talking about characters. We've all had a turn. Uh, Go so Tony. Who, who's your favorite oh, character? Oh, Best character. Oh my favorite. Oh, uh, I'm looking for my notes. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I finally got my own. What you want notes now? Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me. Yeah, uh, try and find uh, that napkin that you wow. scribbled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I actually have a text. Uh, <laughs> you see, this episode there was some strange things that happened with some of the characters. I think it was Becky in this case. Uh, mm-hmm. Hold on. What was it? We found out more. You see, now, if I had my notes, I'd be able to tell you which one was which. You could just lie and fake watching it. Watching both episodes. Yeah, I suppose notes. you could do that. But anyways, there was something, uh, we'll something about, about, uh, about Becky in the sense that uh, I like, like she was caught in between a rock and a hard place. And I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, but she, she ran into a situation where she had to make a decision and she could have uh, forced what she wanted out of the guy, but chose not to and just walked away from him when he threw the medicine in the... In the that's no, that's, the, next episode. that's the next episode. Yeah. See? Yeah. That's why I need my notes. Yeah, I <laughs> get your notes. I did yeah. hint that You early. guys keep so talking and I'll... So and I, I'll, I have, I'll, a, I'll I have yeah. a second choice. I'll, I'll give Tony a little bit of time to find his notes. Okay. I kind of like I, what happened with Jessica and Arby during this episode. Yes. It, it was kind of a weird sort of uh, um, <clears throat> adventure that they got to go on. Uh, they got to spend the day together. They got, they got to kind of hang out and do a bunch of stuff. So they had... They got, they, they got to kill they together. They had a lovely I mean, car ride. Uh, they had yeah. breakfast. Uh, it's his local, apparently. Uh, they reminisced <laughs> by a tree where he murdered somebody that she knew. Uh, they raided the compound and burned it down. Uh, he they uh, he showed his um, uh, his room. They talked about Canadian rocks. They talked about Daddy. Yeah. Uh, he gave her the manuscript. So, so and you're then she kind of left a date. while his home burns to the ground. So like it was a lovely. They had this there. They had this lovely intertwined, beautiful kind of friendship <laughs> through their horrible lives. Uh, yeah. Through this episode, yeah. and it was profound because it was countered by the main story moving 
with everybody else in the group, and it was really fantastic and, and awesome. It was so cool. Yeah, I hope I hope Arby doesn't sort of disappear. I don't know, and don't tell me. But I yeah, but I hope Arby you know, doesn't you sort of disappear. Fix your mic because you got uh, blowing happening. So uh, yeah, just, just move your mic yeah, up just, to so bring up, it further up. away and up a little bit. And it just bring fine. it up up to your cheek there. All right, no problem. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there was just a, it was interesting because they. They both came from the same monster and the same situation, yeah. and they're both Literally coming the back monster. to it from different angles. So yeah. it, it was really a fascinating, fascinating thing. It, it wasn't great character development, but it was this great backstory where you're learning about everything. He's literally yeah. taking his sibling on a journey to, you know, uh, this is what I went through, and, and you know, uh, maybe we're not so different. And they both got told the same rock lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the same rock lie. Oh, my this gives God. You permission to do anything. Yeah. That's All interesting, right. that whole idea of the, what would you call that, a totem or a, uh, 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 like a uh, conch or something, right? I mean, it's a rock, but I'm saying it's, yeah, it's, it's a representation uh, to give you power. So if you ever get stuck, it allows you to do things. Like, yeah. it, that's phenomenal. I've Talisman. never Talisman. experienced that in real life. You don't have a rock, dude? I don't I, have a rock. Oh my God, a I, could a rock. I don't yeah. have a potum. Yeah. Does anybody? Here, here's a rock. rock. I, got a, I got a rock sitting right beside my gun. Yeah. <laughs> Your other totem. Yeah, I'm going to give you a rock, dude, but uh, you got to break it down and smoke it, and man, you'll be totem. <laughs> uh, all right. Sorry, guys. Uh, so we're going to painfully Tony, move on to the next question. Oh, Tony, did you find Tony, your notes? Tony, did you find your notes? I found my notes. Did you? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Do you want to have another swing at the best bat? character? Best character. Okay, best character. Uh, I went with. Oh yeah, I guess I went with uh, Lats because uh, when he realized <laughs> that he'd just been abandoned. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lats is uh, he's an interesting character because he, you know, you don't see him enough uh, in the show. He's kind of one of these background characters that comes out, and I think he does a great sinister. Uh, experience uh, appearance at the beginning, uh, and then now he's like this this person that that feel like he's the, the world's crumbling around him, and other characters from his evil corporation are stepping up and basically saying, uh, "Dude, your days are numbered." Uh, so it very intense. There was some nice foreshadowing that happened uh, that yeah. we're going to talk about later. Um, so let's talk uh, about best scene because there are so many crazy scenes in this this particular mm -hmm. episode. I'm going to throw this to uh, Jadeen to get it started. Um, for me, it it, um, it it my favorite scene is where Jennifer brokers the deal with Anya, the prostitute, in like the prison just before she's going to be released with, from prison, and she literally tells Anya exactly what's going to happen, the way it has to happen, and Michael is in the background the entire time, just yeah. leaning against this just post, against the post, and yeah. Jennifer is in 100% control, and tells this woman, who is a Russian prostitute, who's part of the mafia, who is in jail for uh, supposedly killing that reporter, and she's like, you're going to get out tomorrow when you get out tomorrow. And it was intense. It was like a, it was like an inter a reverse interrogation. It's like, this is what's going to happen. You have to agree to the deal. That's it. And it was fantastic. It was just a powerful scene. And again, from a character who had just come into the foreground because of what yeah. her dumb husband has done and got yes. himself into. <laughs> very solid yeah. scene. I loved that scene. So intense. Yeah. Well, and yeah. it's also very minimalist too. I mean, the, the, once again, it reminds me of what they did uh, in earlier episodes where they took uh, a, a minimalist scene, the, him in um, a hotel room and shot a completely boring hotel room five or six different angles. And here they're in, in a uh, prison security zone with even less fixtures and do the same thing. It was very, very, very well done. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, let's throw the next one over to Tony to get him warmed up. Tony, what do you have for uh, best scene, dude? I, I think in the spirit of minimalism, that red room uh, with uh, Jake Milner's son uh, was pretty pretty stark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was, was intense, uh, that scene. 
Yeah, there, yeah. There, there was a lot. Again, I, I guess in this episode, I noticed the colors were different, uh, and red seemed to be something that this deep, dark red in the backgrounds seemed to be a fairly common theme throughout this episode. Hmm, nice catch, dude. Yeah. All right, um, let's throw it over to Big Ken. Uh, uh, for me, um, uh, I mean, we, we've talked about it actually uh, quite a bit, but uh, it, it was in the in the house with Let's Tied to the Chair, and yeah. and, uh, and he's giving the explanation as to why they're delivering the drug. The, that, for me, uh, I mean, uh, so far in, in every show, I've picked the scene that has the most the most back and forth, the biggest jumps, uh, uh, you know, the, the, and, and, but he was, he was giving all of it because of all the logical reasons, but they're all crazy. Uh, you know, it, it's, it, it doesn't, these, these are so logical, but they're, they're insane reasons at the same time. Um, and, and then finally, uh, through it all, uh, the one that, that wants to kill him the most uh, now wants to defend him. Uh, yes, it, 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 and the big turnaround the, for Wilson. Yeah. Think about the logic, though, is that it's the same as uh, Churchill, what he did. Oh, here we come. Here's really, okay. You know, uh, I mean, really? Like uh, when we talk about the, 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 the rationale behind what's going on and why they're doing what they're doing, I can see why Wilson sees that, uh, making the change that he did and, and placing his faith in essentially in a trust of entities that he's always mistrusted. That seems a little uh, absurd to me, but the rationale for why they're doing what they're doing it doesn't. It doesn't seem all that flawed in some ways. Yeah. Probably you, you in some just, ways more humane. You know, but you, you I, I, Churchill just that. I want to know the Churchill side. <laughs> Churchill side does uh, basically not uh, not letting uh, that town know that they were about to be attacked in France. Uh, mm. Which which town yeah. was that? Oh, yeah. and it was the Enigma Enigma. <laughs> so yeah. I couldn't help myself. Yes, when they broke the Enigma code, uh, and um, yeah, so we made a harsh decision. Yeah, and I, and I know uh, Spock brings it up a lot too. Is like uh, the needs yeah. of the ma the means needs of the many outweigh the, the needs of the, the few. Needs of the few. Yeah. So there you go. That's yeah. that's a Spock isn't there. But, but the problem still, here is I, that I, we I have just... a small group of people with a lot of hubris who think that they're the only ones that have the right solution that they can impose it on everyone else. That, and that's and really always the harsh solution too. It's always about killing. Why don't they just yeah. take? A billion dollars and give it away to people and see how they behave when they don't have to worry about money. We already know what happens. They redistribute some wealth. What do you Nietzsche mean? He already found we... out. Nietzsche was a wealthy man. He found out, felt bad for people, gave people money, and then turned around and got so depressed to discover that it didn't change their lives. Of course it didn't. So, it so didn't one guy, it, it's but killing them is the best way to do. Just eliminate well, them, get rid of them. Technically, uh, he's not killing anyone, though, right? That's, well, that's, they're not killing that's anyone. The that's, the that's the moral. That's the moral. Okay, one turn they the they're, they're just preventing births. They're not yes. killing anybody. Yeah, it's it's like if if we um, had a we, if we had a. Yeah. Are you pro they're, 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 they're initially, initially. changing the human system. Yes, they're they making are. that is what you're doing. A small right. group of people, a small group yeah. of people, as opposed to the entire collective of humanity, making that decision. That's what's wrong with that logic. Dar yeah, Darwin would be spinning in his grave. Yeah, but you also got to look at it sure like like that. the the more no, people Darwin involved in the decision, the less the less intelligent it is, right? It's it's the it's the masses. If you look at a, at a a rioting group, the actual collective intelligence of that group is way way lower than an individual uh, speaking. So well, yeah, he, there's all sorts of hum humanistic. I mean, this is what's amazing about the show, guy. This is what I love about it. It makes you think about these things. You're like, oh my god. Yeah. Let, so, let me toss in something that speaks oh, to this, yeah. except from another perspective. Idiocracy. Have any of you guys seen that show? Yes. Oh, amazing. Yes. Yeah. This is, you know, the breeders breed the unintelligent, and then suddenly, you know, the intelligence goes down. We, yeah. You know. There yeah. you go. Darwinism, man. Darwinism. <laughs> but, I mean, but that's not how this is designed in terms of what they're talking about. No, I mean, no, that's what true. They're saying is, what they're saying is they're bringing up the population bomb. And I get it. I get the idea of the population bomb. Yeah. But what I don't understand about it is the way wealth is moved around in a society that there's a ton more things that you could fix before oh, yeah. you fix the the herd. Stop treating us like a herd and maybe we'll stop acting like a fucking herd. Well, and that's the problem I'm having. 
And yeah, the problem I'm having, these last two sort of... episodes, I was really disgusted with the idea. And it's funny because I've thought about these things myself. But uh, when you have a guy who is gleeful about giving a woman a disease and very happy <laughs> that it worked and that he worked on it himself, I did that to you. Isn't that awesome? It worked. I'm so excited. And yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to sterilize because that's the only solution. And it's like, no, that's not the only solution. That's the solution you chose in order to maintain your position and wealth. Yeah, the ends that's do not justify why you the chose means. it. Yeah. And, what? And, I mean, yeah. the doctor, the doctor sort of bears all of this out when he says that uh, he's trying to get Becky. Uh, it, it, it's in the next episode, but he wants money because he he understands. Oh, the slimy doctor. Only money is the only yeah. money is going to make you survive. I mean, he he wants money. Constantly. Yeah, we mentioned this. Actually, this is the last episode. Was uh, I think it was episode four, and he was one of that was one of my favorite yeah. scenes. Is where the two doctors are basically have this girl, little girly fight. Um, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no negative feminist uh, no, stuff girly. Right there. But but really, I mean, it was like just I, you know it was so sad. Um, yeah. But that's the reason they did that, and and the director told him to fight that way instead of being like, you know, oh, let's do some fistical yeah, stuff. Punch. They were making a point. Let's have a big slap fight. These guys are academics, and the, they live in an academic world, and you are driven, and the way you have a fist fight in an academic is bringing a killer paper or no. proving something and creating a disease and having that disease work. That's yeah. why he's so proud is because he's manning up. He's basically so excited because he's an artist. And he is. He, that, yeah. You got that. that. That's that, the look on his face, Bob. Exactly. Yeah. He is yeah. so. He, he's not being an asshole. He's just like, oh my God, this is this is my Mona Lisa. I can't I believe it. Oh, can we talk about it some more? And he's like, yeah. are you an asshole? So it would be like if the Mona Lisa was some, you know, amazingly pornographic piece that that you know whatever, and people looked at, it, they would be shocked today, um, then Mona Lisa wouldn't be the Mona Lisa. But and, and Leonardo would still have been just as proud of it. And, and let's did it to Arby too, because he was so oh, yeah. proud of what they did, did with Arby yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like they made oh, yeah. him, I mean he but, was different, but they made him into something. And, and let's and, agrees and, that he's done a thousand crimes, and, and yeah. this is just one in the string of. Mm. <laughs> Well, you know, interesting as uh, as this 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 discussion is, um, season two, uh, they bring it back again. So don't worry, we'll get a chance to walk, talk about it some more. Um, yeah. So let's let's move along and and get to uh, the second part of the second question, which is I think we're in the best scene. Who has not had a chance for the best scene here? JD. JD. Did um, you I did. I did. Jennifer. I. I Bob. Yeah. I don't think. Okay, I think me. Issues? I'm. I'm the cold man out. Yeah. Um, I did. Arby and Jessica in the diner. Um, and and, and yes. I thought it was such an amazing scene. It's like and and it's a great line in there too. I won't I'll mention it, but yeah, he's he's eating crap food in this <laughs> diner, and he's saying, "Yo, this is my local. It's so cool." And, and he's, he's hanging out, with him. just just trying to be. I mean, Arby trying to be cool. It's like this is my playground, and you're my sister, and everything's cool now. Blah blah. And and her just not what what. And then the next scene after that, proving Arby was right. Um, I thought it was brilliant, and then the other scene that I thought was awesome is um, Arby and and uh, Jessica at the dead tree. At that the, yeah. Oh, yeah. is so yeah. heavy. Oh my God! It's like yeah. you know. Oh, okay, Jessica, I'm gonna do what you've been doing to everybody for the last five uh, episodes. Boom. Yeah. Like, How are you gonna tell? You gonna kill me or not? And once again. Cut. Right on the head. Once again, it goes to this thing. Here's one argument where, yes, you want to kill me, but before you kill me, yep. Yep. You're gonna kill him. here's my other argument. I say, oh, yeah. damn it. So, so it, it's, it's almost like a theme and to the show. she throws away the gun. It was that convincing an argument. She throws away the gun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and so... I love that scene because in, in, in such – and it's a short scene. It's not a long scene, but it's so well done. It's so minimalist again. Um, but once again, it almost like reflects this ongoing yin-yang approach to arguments in the show that, are, that have all this stuff stripped away. So all you have is the argument. And as a and as a viewer, you have to go through the mental stuff. And, you know, they have these long pregnant pauses where you can have your little discussion in your brain and make a decision, and then they boom, they slap you in the face and say, "Uh, uh here's another one." And they go, "Oh, I'm going back there." And I think 
for me, when I was watching the show, when I was getting to this this level, this is when I start to see these amazing patterns happening. Say, man, this writing is so over the top, so advanced. I would love to see more shows that would be produced that would respect me on this type of intellectual because it's it's a difficult show to watch because it brings your humanity into it. Yeah. Like yeah. you're arguing with yourself. Yes. And That's it's such how a good balance. It is. They present both sides of every argument in in a mo in in the most raw of it. Um, and, and it's it's uh, uh, I, I I love the way they they do that. I mean, they say hey, it's black, and then somebody comes up, no, it's white, uh, and, and you agree with both. Oh, you assholes! What do you? And they do it. And they do it. And they do it with all of this vivid color. All yes, and then they, yeah. yeah, and it looks pretty. <laughs> oh, God, I love it. Okay, so we're going to move on to the, <laughs> it's funny, weirdest and most confusing scene. Oh, so, yeah. So uh, uh, let's throw this one oh, out. Let's, oh. I'm going to start off with Ken. Ken, what's your weirdest oh, scene? Oh, um, um, e, um, e, um, the, in the beginning, when when the the doctor is talking to Becky mm -hmm. uh, in in the field, and he and he knows that the pages are missing, but his reason because he he knows people. Yeah. And and uh, I mean, I was it was I mean, you sort of figure it out later on when when you find out that the doctor's been talking to somebody else, uh, but um, it it doesn't it it's still sort of How's this doctor tied in? I mean, he was he was an idiot, uh, uh, you know, in so many different ways. Now he's tied in. Uh, I, I uh, for some reason that just didn't make sense to me. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> um, no, he, he's he's interesting. Like for the like he's been in only a couple of episodes, and and he turns into such a, a douchebag. Uh, yeah, really. Uh, but. He always was a douchebag because that was the first thing he said. He was super popular, but he liked prostitutes and and cocaine, and but they didn't have to tell on him, and and literally that's what he wants to go back to. He he's an addict basically. I, that's I can't view him as anything else. He just wants money so he can have the things that he wants, and he doesn't sure. give a shit about anybody, humanity, no, yeah. anything. He's so fucking weird, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, so um, all right, then I'm going to jump in here, and uh, basically we've talked about this already. It's basically uh, when they're interrogating the guy in the room, and he realizes the phone, um, his phone. Uh, let me just look at phone tracking. Yeah, basically when he says he's abandoned, and and what I thought was interesting about yeah. this <clears throat> and confusing about the scene is like here's a it's a primary guy. I mean, he used to be sitting the the the, the corporate seat of death. Uh, at the beginning of the show, and and we were saying, okay, this is this is the kingpin here, and now he's just nobody. He's just like yet another piece of of yeah, flotsam, yeah. Flotsam, mm, and yeah. and and that was so confusing for me. Um, I I see, you know, in this show they don't kill off characters; they just basically demoralize them so much that you don't respect them anymore. Yeah, and it's, just, it's slow. They just have to leave. <laughs> well, they killed him off cuts. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I think that's the that's the nature of this network that's playing there. It's like a multi-headed hydra, and at any time mm. you think you're dealing with one head, when there's three or five heads, and yeah. you know, it, it gets any at any time you could just lop one off, and another one will grow in its place. But yeah, it's he was like you said, super creepy and strong, and then became this like a like a, a nerd uh, about, like you said, like a nerd artist, mm -hmm. and, and so much disrespect. Like he made me so angry. Just the idea that he was clever, and being clever was, you know, turning turning off uh, ninety percent of the population's ability to reproduce. That that's him being clever. Well, that's not too it. fucking clever. I don't That's get like why he chopping off your hands. Yeah, I don't get why he decided to go back to his group. But to me, it was the antithesis of being clever. That was just yeah. He, yeah. he yeah. knew that was going to happen. So why? Yeah. He knew he'd been set afloat. So why did he go there? Yeah. Hey, I mean, he he had no other choice. I mean, he he was a creature of habit. Um, I would. Uh, I'm going to throw um, Tony under the bus now with the the this one. So weirdest. Uh, with, 
confusing scene? Well, I guess it wasn't so much weird or confusing. Well, I guess it was weird. Let's call it weird. Jessica's dream when she dreamt about that tree and those two figures that were like monsters. Faceless, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was very brief, very fleeting. I almost missed it. But uh, I noticed that, that that was the tree that she and uh, and Arby had uh, bumped into later. So there's some significance that I'm imagining. Some more of that will be revealed in the future. Yeah, yeah but when when she was when she was dreaming that, and and the two guys were faceless, one of them had to be Arby. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's it. it's essentially. Yeah. That's the event that she's having a nightmare about. Yeah. So it's and a nightmare gets, version gets, of a reality. Well, Darby but describes they, the they, scenario they, in front of the tree where he killed. Uh, who did he kill? Her, 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 Christos, uh, Christos uh, who, who was what? Her, her, her the person father. who raised her? Her mother. Yeah, the person no, who father. helped her escape, basically, yeah. from mm. her father. Exactly. From the lab. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah, Arby was describing that he had done that to him in uh, in front of that tree, but I'm not entirely certain that the dream she was having was, was about was that particular yeah, incident. It was about her I'm mother. Thinking, uh, yeah, I'm thinking it's connected to other oh, okay. experiences yeah, that she's yeah. had in her life, and the tree is just something that the two of them share between us as as siblings. Sorry, I, I was just confused. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah hey, that's good oh, because it's the most confusing scene. It's perfect. Yeah. Really. <laughs> hey, that's what we want. So, Jahideen. What do you got? So uh, my um, my weird scene was uh, Milner and her son, and and it's not the scene or the introduction of it. The end of it, where she says, you know, uh, when the time t comes, I have something we can take. Mm. Um, and it was like, what? What are you talking about? So you guys are just she's just going to commit suicide? I totally misunderstood it. I watched it twice. And it it was a very interesting take. And then she pops up in the next episode. But it it really made it sound like that was it. She was going to die there with her son that yeah. night. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was like, oh, okay. This is it? This is the end of the road for you? Okay, see you later. But it seemed odd. Like it, it didn't – it seemed kind of – um, uh, heavy or weird to me. I didn't yeah, understand I mean, why she needed yeah, to. Yeah. I think in retrospect, it was an intentional setup on her behalf because as we yeah. discover yes, later on who she yeah, actually yeah. has. But you she, don't find that out yeah. at one point. Yeah, but she's that out one point. Next what is it gonna, hang on, yeah, hang on yeah, guys. We have to talk one at a time or nobody can I'm hear. Sorry. Yeah, I just, well, let me finish the sentence. <laughs> she says at one point, uh, what do I have to do to get you people to trust me? Mm. Yeah. 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 So to me, this is all part of selling her story. Yeah, and that's and that's in the next episode. Now I understand it once you go into episode six because there's you know the tapestry yeah. unwinds. Yeah. But in here, in the context of who Milner is, it was weird and out of context. But I kind of understood it because her son is dying, and so what she was really trying to say is. Without my son, I'm kind of nothing, so when it's time for him to go, I'm going to go with him. Yes. That I kind of got, but it was said in such a unique way that I didn't really get. I'm, I'm not uh, leaving him, she said. I'm not leaving him. Yeah, yeah, and then at that point, she sends them to Michael. So she's like, I'm out. You go, go look up Michael. I'm done. Yeah, yeah. And then she pops in later. <laughs> <laughs> Yet again, and does something really... Yeah. Yeah. But it was a bit confusing for me, but I understand it in context, but when you just watch episode five, the context is is like, oh wow, she's just gonna kill herself and her son. Okay, see you later. Yeah, wow. okay. She's um, waiting for the yeah. people to show up and kill them both. Bye bye. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. Someone's gonna come by and and uh, do the deed. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think what happens a lot of time in the show, uh, they they put in these um, confusing parts just to keep you off. Of killed. It's like watching a really good mystery show where you think, oh, this person did it, and then no, that person did it. Oh. And it's to keep you guessing. They're cheating a little bit uh, by confusing you a bit, but I mean, hey, that's that's yeah. poetic license or, or creative license yeah. to, to make yeah. the show interesting. They're allowed. It's their job. Yeah, it, it really, if you do that enough times, you start not trusting scenes, and that's what you want to have happen because then yeah. there's a suspension of, of, suspension of, of belief. While you're watching the show, it's like, oh my god, I'm feeling like these guys. So I think they do a really good job there, and I think they do it almost on every episode. It'd be nice to go back, rewatch the, the these six episodes, and see 
uh, the confusing scenes they put in that were answered later on in that particular episode or one exactly. or two episodes later. Um, a, a show that did that uh, brilliantly was Breaking Bad with you know that teddy bear floating in the pool. Well, they did that for six bloody shows over multiple yeah. seasons. I mean, my God, guys, it, you know that that's taking to the nth level. So it's not like they're reinventing something to do something new. They're just doing it in such a sophisticated way, in such a sophisticated piece. With it's like layers and layers and layers, and the creativity and stuff. Once well, again, this is why we're 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 spending so much time on this particular show. It's yeah. uh, you tie in, when you start ripping it apart and going through the layers and like like an onion, um, basically you're realizing, oh my god, this is good, and you start, and the deeper you go, the 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 better it gets. It's not like it starts falling apart. You start to see, oh my goodness, <laughs> I didn't get it. I have to watch this whole series again. And really, you know, we've all watched it at least once. Uh, and I think after you know doing this series. I really, I'm so confused <laughs> that I want to go back and watch it again because so much has gone on. And I, I think a binge watch over one night would be awesome to, because yeah. it, it's only like six hours. So you could basically do a six-hour stretch to see if it would work better that way. Um, but that's an experiment for another day, folks. Um, uh, now, have we, have, Go ahead. I was going to say, I think one of the, the things that really strikes me about this show is, is how they stretch the bounds of plausibility or credibility, but they still remain plausible. Mm, like, this yeah. is really, yeah. Yeah. you know, these are incredible circumstances and, and things that, you know, are harsh to, to deal with. But in a way, they haven't overplayed it and made it corny. They, they've made it all scary real. This could really be happening. But you know what? It, uh, that, that's it. I'm not trusting Milner anymore, oh, ever. Ever. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Until I will episode two. Well, maybe. you can only trust them as long as you understand what their motives are uh, in the short yeah. term and what you're going to get in that short yeah, term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But isn't that what life's all about? <laughs> I wish it weren't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Let's move on to my favorite section, which is best lines. And I'm sure we have more than one each. So what we'll do is we'll do one round. Uh, we all get a turn, like opening presents, and then uh, we'll do it again. Um, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to jump in here first because, hey, what the heck? Um, and uh, I'm going to get an easy one. Uh, the pers the purpose of uh, Jonas is to sterilize the whole human race. I thought that was an awesome line because that was like like the big boom, boom. Yeah. You know, yeah. that that's the f thank you. That, that that's the thing uh, with this show. It's being explained again and again, but this is the first time somebody's put it that succinctly. Hey, come on, yeah. we're just gonna. <laughs> oh no, we're doing, we're doing everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody. Look I don't that. care what color you are, what race you are. It doesn't matter to me. I'm gonna <laughs> do it. That it's was interesting. You, that was that, that's what everyone said. So, yeah. which race are you gonna mess up? Well, yeah. with them all. What are you talking about? It's wow. like if you're human, just, you're, in. Yeah. you're not doing. Yeah, that was the one thing. saving grace about their philosophy is that it was a random yeah. selection. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it was equal opportunity death. Yeah. Uh, okay, so for a, a great best line, uh, I'm gonna throw this one to uh, JD. And what do you got for us? Um, well, let's see. Um. I got a few, but there's ones that I, 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 I just I I love when RB don't don't worry I I, I always come here it's my local yeah. I just yeah. just the idea that that guy has a local <laughs> at all and he's got people who know him and he gets a regular breakfast and a, you're just like that guy's nothing regular like when we yeah. saw his crazy apartment. Yeah other things like but you're like yeah he's fucking human it's like the humanity in him really comes out in a simple statement and mm -hmm. I actually yeah. had empathy and sympathy for him and that's hard to do he's a stone cold killer right <laughs> oh for sure yeah yeah uh, okay so uh, let's uh, throw it over to Ken for a best line okay um, I, I just love this line it's uh, um, uh, let's tied to the chair and he, and he uh, uh, looks at the group and says, you know the person who had the most positive impact on the environment in this planet? Oh, yeah. Genghis Khan, because he massacred 40 million people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, what's wrong with that sentence? Uh, yeah. And and then he proceeds to explain why he thinks that. Uh, I just thought that was a great line. I, I paused it and went, no, 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 no wait a minute. No, that whole section. I got to hear that again. <laughs> launches in that, yeah. 
Yeah, no, this, uh, there are some killer, killer lines in, in this particular episode for sure. Um, okay, Tony, you're up to the bat. Uh, you and, and Ken both mentioned um, lines that had to do with uh, the solution to the problem. Mm. And I think this line actually encapsulates the problem. It was by Donaldson when he was explaining to Becky uh, why he was trying to make money off of this. In the future, if you're old, you're dead unless you're wealthy. And I think that yeah. really sums up the, the, real, the real threat. That's, that's well, from the next episode. That's what happens though, now. Right? Yeah. Is that, well, is no, that from that's, this episode? Six, I thought. 105, no, I've got... Oh, is that five? Yeah. Well, okay. you know what? It, it, it's it's interesting because that's basically what it, what it's like now in the world. I mean, if you're poor, you die very young. You die at 40, maybe yeah. 50. And here we're 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 in 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 North America. It's like you know you get pissed off if you die at 80. It's like 80. What a rip off. Yeah. And you yeah. know, and I want to be active at 75. I don't want to be like like bedridden. I mean, so and, and you look back like 100 years, 200 years, like 45 was old. Guys, 45 is really, really old. So the concept of resource sharing and the ability to, to survive as, as, as yeah. a race on this little tiny planet, um, there are limitations. And so, some, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a very apocalyptic show, but it's also based on some very, very real problems that we have today. So, yeah, killer line, man. Yeah. Yeah, but the problem and the problem with all these kinds of solutions is the group is the one who gets to decide. Sure. And the so do you think money. these guys are going to be taking any of the Russian flu vaccine? Do you think any of their family members are going to be getting those oh, shots? Sure. Yeah, well, it's always that way, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, I mean, so if that's decisions the Decisions like this cannot be anything other than made in hypocrisy. Yeah. 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 Well, you be able to sacrifice yourself if you're going to expect others to do that. Well, and the thing is, is that in, in, uh, in the movie Twelve Monkeys, I think it was, uh, when an environmental group released a bacteria that basically wipes out 99% of humanity, uh, and a time traveler comes back to try and fix the problem, um, that basically it, it, that's what happens. It, it, if it's a non-controlled environment, it's like, oh, well, we're just going to wipe out everybody, because it is either everybody, because as soon as you start saying, oh, well, some will survive. Who are the some? Then you have to make a decision. And, uh, you know, are, are we going to have a bunch of idiots survive? Because then they're just going to mess up again. But it is. It's always the idiots that survive because it's the same fucking rulers who came up with the smart idea. I don't I think, think it's a smart the podcasters idea. That should, they should be the podcasters that survive. That's what I say. <laughs> okay, because, yes. You know, yes I'm not podcasters. Podcasters. You have to yes. at least a minimum two shows a week yes. and then you know, to survive. Yeah. <laughs> totally agreed. Okay, sorry. Very heated emotions in tonight's episode. No, that's all I well echoed. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, I have a bright, a light, a, a, a line that's funny. Oh well, okay. Well, you can we can do a second round, so we'll start with you then. Okay, yep. it's RB when he says, "I need to go to the toilet." Oh, I need to go to the other one. There might be some noises. <laughs> yeah, that was my second one as well. Yeah. Yeah, great one, great one. Um, JD, what do you got for a second one? Um, I like uh, Michael's boss. He's always super fucking creepy and weird, uh -huh. and um, he he uh, he always says has some really great dark lines and stuff. So it's it's him talking to Michael. How's Jen? Devastated, but still alive. Look, I'm trying to protect you. <laughs> you last night is the start of an unimaginable nightmare. Stop being so stupid. You are tiny. You are tiny? Like, yeah. it's, it's, I just love him. Like, he's just, he's evil. And at the end of the episode, he also has to get in there and get rid of that dude with the rope. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. here you go. Yeah. Here's some rope. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, I didn't think he would be the type that would struggle with that, that last order. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he's a minister, so he doesn't want to get his hands dirty. I guess. I think he's that's really he what orders it is. other people do it. Well, it's it's a power structure. What they're they're, they're showing is uh, it's a it's the way a power structure works. Is it's and that that goes straight to my quote, which uh, I will say, um, uh, yes, of course you can. You see, it's an order. I'm giving <laughs> yeah. you an order, and and basically what he's saying is like because I'm giving you an order. I am taking the responsibility away from you, so now you're allowed to kill somebody. And that is what war is. It's like we're going to war, and we're uh, the government or the, the representatives of the government, the people you vote in or whatever, saying you are now allowed to kill other people, and you won't be punished for it. 
So there that's you go. Right. Good for you. That's right. And and that's what was amazing about that scene and amazing about that line is he was basically showing how the military uh, and and um, aggressive governments work. It's like we are taking the moral high ground, even though it's not a moral high ground. We're just allowing you to be immoral. And it's it's a huge problem uh, that our societies have when you have people that have been exposed to those type of decisions and then are brought back into the society and expected to function normally. I mean, that's insane. It's like, oh, you're allowed to kill a bunch of people and then come back and apply for a job at Arby's. Well, you can't do that now, though. No, no, you can't do that now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, was, yeah. that was only there. Yeah, fun time's over. Yeah, fun do time's it. over. You have to wait till the next war. Yes. <laughs> then you can do it again, no problem. You can't start your own war because that's not valid. No. What is it? Forty percent of people on the streets uh, live on homeless people are are war veterans. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they, wow. they can't function within our they society. Yeah. The only reason, well, because they are no longer asleep. They have been woken up uh, for military use, and uh, it's it's hard to put somebody back to sleep. Um. So uh, who do we? Oh, we got, does Jadine have you got uh, yeah. another quote in there? I, I I did just did one. Ken. Go to yeah, the I, I, one. yeah, yeah. Tony took mine. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, it always happens. Well, if you hadn't said it, I would have. So. I can give when, you another uh, one if you want. <laughs> you when uh, when uh, uh, Becky and <laughs> Becky and Ian go visit uh, Milner at, at at her place, and uh, Becky says, "You sure this is the right thing to do?" Ian, "No, not really. What's the worst that can happen? She could kill us, or hand us over to them to kill us, or torture us." <laughs> <laughs> like it's just this. It's a laundry list now. Well, they yeah, could exactly. us, or they yeah. could kill us, or yeah. they could torture us. You know, yeah. that's yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. I have to admit, uh, Doug Dale really pissed me off when they called it uh, called the uh, authorities on uh, on ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I really, yeah. what a douchebag. That was intense. Yeah. I've been trying yeah. to like this guy, but when he does stuff like that, it's just yeah. Uh, He's just such a nobody loser. That's the whole yeah. thing. That's that he's scared. He's running yeah, scared. Yeah, but he's he's weak. Properly. He is weak. I mean, Jennifer told everybody he's weak. Yeah, and yeah. Jennifer's outstanding. So you know, yeah. obviously, she's telling the truth. Yeah, obviously, I mean, she's telling the truth. If only we could have her narrating the show, it'd be yeah. way, way yeah. less confusing. Oh, don't Can worry. We get, her, we get her on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, do we have any more um, loose ends as far as quotes, gentlemen? Nope. Um, I'd, I'd like the line from Jennifer. Um, my husband is weak, but he will make a very good father, and I will love your child more than you can imagine. I promise. Mm. It, it, it's it, it's to admittingly say it, and he can't say anything. He's standing in the background, and he accepts mm -hmm. everything. Like his wife basically has said, this is it, and I, it's just so yeah. strong to admit that. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, actually, it was a good round of best lines. I I I think that's yeah. my favorite part of the show because it, we really get some that's good stuff. Yep. Amazing, amazing content this show. I, I love when we got at the political stuff, the life reality stuff earlier on. Some great stuff going on. Um, but now we're coming to the score. Yes. So the score. out out of five, there's no such thing as a five, four point nine maybe. But what do we have? And let's start with JD. Um, I really love this episode. Uh, it has a lot of good character development. It's very heavy that way. A lot of shoe drops. You get to know, you find out who Becky's uh, contact is. You you find out uh, Milner and the connection to deals. You find out what the big ploy and plot is all about, the sterilization of humanity, the whole thing. I, I gave it a, a 4.6. I, I thought it was fantastic. Wow, that's incredible. Coming from JD, 4.6, I was thinking he was going to go by 4.4, 4.3. Nope. Holy crap, 4.6. That, I think, is a record for JD. Yeah. That's <laughs> my highest yeah, one, uh, I, except for next episode. <laughs> 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 oh, spoiler well, the surprise. Oh, my God. All right, so uh, let's throw it over to Ken. What did you give us a score? Well, it's, you know, it's uh, two point. Oh, no, sorry. No, not <laughs> <two>. <laughs> sorry, I, I read that upside down. Even no, I'm, I'm in total agreement with uh, J. Dean. Uh, I gave it a 4.6. Uh, this this was um, all of those, the, the first the first four where I was confused and what the heck, why did it was a, how, well, how come with the thing? <laughs> and and uh, uh, this one, yeah, it cleared up a whole bunch of stuff. And, and yeah, I was much happier. Uh, happier. I had a smile on my face by the end of it, even though half the people were dead or diseased. Or <laughs> but but you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. awesome. Uh, okay, Tony, what do you got for us? 
Well, I guess I'm going in the opposite direction because for me, I've been scaling back my, my scores because I really love this series. But uh, I think in terms of this this episode versus the other ones, uh, I like that it wrapped up a bunch of things. Uh, it was a kind of a nice, comfortable uh, feeling of knowing what was going on to some degree, but it didn't maintain that same tension that all the other episodes did, so I scored a 4-2. Wow, a harsh score from our Wait, judge. 4.2, did he say? 4.2, that's like that. Shock. <laughs> shock. The Russian judge doesn't like the Canadians. <laughs> Way to go, Tony. Nice, nice I, ice water. Uh, <laughs> and I'm ice the one that brought up the scores <laughs> beyond four to begin with. <laughs> Pedal back. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's awesome, guys. Um, well, um, I, I it's interesting. I, I, I really like this episode, but uh, I know stuff that's coming up in the future with, yeah. with um, <laughs> season two. Uh, so I had to give it a 4.4. Um, awesome nice. show. I, I struggle. It's a high 4.4, maybe a 4.5. Uh, just because I need the leg room for for episode six and uh, season two, because gosh, guys, four point six, seven, eight, nine—that's like three point three. That's nothing. Yeah. That's yeah. nothing you got to play with for six more episodes coming up in in our, our round two of this crazy, crazy utopia show. <laughs> season two. That's uh, one is the better. Four point four. They're all good. Yeah, they're awesome. So I mean, and you know what? Um, just a, as a heads up, next week when we do. Um, Season, six. season, uh, episode six is not only are we going to do a vote for the whole uh, for that particular episode, we're going to do it for the whole season. So you guys keep your thinking caps on um, and and start thinking about what you're going to give it a score for the whole season because you know you can give it an incredibly high score for the whole season because combined a lot of times the whole is greater than its parts. Um, and now. Uh, that we've got that out of the way. Do we have any last second um, blurbs that people want to throw out there before we wrap up the show? For for me, I just want to mention the the bookend scenes. These episodes are always so full of amazing stuff, acting, shooting, cinematography, but they always put these really powerful bookend scenes. Uh, it the the opening scene for this episode is everybody waking up at the house. You got a man in a hood. Grant is watching over Alice. Wilson is like having nightmares. Ian is the only one who he's just lying there prone looking up at the ceiling and Becky's about to meet her contact. And that's the first reveal of the contact. A great like every the nobody can really sleep. Nobody can really, um, you know, uh, be regular people. It, it just sets the tone that everybody is displaced and everybody is not where they should be. It, it's fantastic. And then it closes with Michael calling the cops on Grant, uh, Ian and Alice barely getting away. Becky finds Wilson stabbed and bloody. Jessica has the manuscript and lets uh, uh, gets to the room and gets finished off. Uh, like unreal powerful stuff. And these are just the final the opening seconds and the final seconds. And they do this all the time where it just sets the tone and you're like, oh my God. And I've never had a show, experienced a show where somebody dies like at the end, every single time somebody's <laughs> dying at the end, it's kind of wild. Mm. It's so crazy. But yeah, it's just uh, off that guy, off this guy, whatever. <laughs> uh, I just want to jump in here for a second. Yep. Um, you know, I've got the the uh, the answer section. People can put in questions, and and we have uh, Raquel uh, Colfer wanted to know: Is this live? Just join, so I'm not sure. And yes, for sure, it's a no, live we're not, thing. We're not live. We're not live. <laughs> yeah, we're not live. Like, no, 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 no. Um, but we will be doing. A, a, I'll send you a quick note and, and to get you up to speed, so you, you can join us in our second show for sure. Um, I just want to. I just want to throw one last thing in sure, here. Sure, absolutely. I mean, th there were so many sort of uh, solutions and 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 uh, um, you know little little things and outcomes and and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, but there was enough enough that you know, this would sort of carry over. It could almost have been the final episode of any other show. Uh, yeah. They left enough things hanging for next season. But you, you're going, oh, there's another show to go. Where are they going to go with that? I mean, come on. They'll be sick, you guys. <laughs> and, and so this kind of almost felt like uh, like a season end. 
Yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. Um, but it's not as you just no. pointed out. So next week you're going to be enjoying uh, the the uh, the sixth episode the sixth episode of this amazing first season. If you haven't checked out Utopia yet, for God's sake, get it together. Watch the show. It's amazing. Uh, I'd highly recommend that you watch the whole series before you listen to these shows because there's tons and tons of stuff, lots and lots of spoilers. But really, you can watch the whole series, listen to this podcast, and literally you'll be wanting to watch that series all over again. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. It's it's yep. good, or I, I would say even better than Breaking Bad. I know that's a shocker. I know it's a shocker, yeah. but um, for sure, definitely worth checking out. So um, for me here in the Crazy TV Talk Talk Studios, I'm uh, I'm gonna say au revoir for now and uh, throw it over to JD and wrap up that show. Uh, thanks uh, again, Bob. Terrific show, guys. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Tony. Can't wait to get into the last episode, episode six. That's going to be uh, coming up. And, uh, of course, folks, check out crazytvtalk.com. Uh, send us uh, uh, requests for shows we should do. If, if you think Utopia is the best or better, let us know. If you think we're crazy, let us know. Uh, download uh, the podcast in iTunes. Rate and review us. It's also and Stitcher, rate and review us there. Thanks so much, everybody, for listening, and go make a great day. All right.